As you know, we are celebrating wedding anniversaries today, and it's not that often that the scriptures present us with two out of three readings that have to do with marriage uh, on the day where we celebrate wedding anniversaries. So we are blessed. It's interesting to remember, and I'm sure many of you anniversarians can, the Vatican Council, the Second Vatican Council. This December, it will be the 50th anniversary of its conclusion. It's hard to believe. But one of the greatest contributions of the Council was its renewed emphasis on the theology and the spirituality of marriage. We also know from the teaching of the Council that all of us share one overarching vocation in the Christian life, and that is the call to holiness. We should all aspire to be holy. And being holy can be a challenge. And yet being holy means something quite simple. It means doing what God wants us to do. When we fulfill God's plan for us, when we get up at the beginning of the day, and we dedicate that day to God and ask God to open our spiritual vision to do what he wants us to do in that 24 hours, we are growing in holiness. And certainly if we pray, God will never leave us in the dark as to what our call to holiness may be. It may be the single state. It may be the married state. It may be religious life. It may be ordained life. But all of these different vocations lead us down the path of holiness. And there is not one holiness which is greater or loftier for one vocation over the other. We are called to do what God created us to do. Of course, today, we focus our attention on the beautiful vocation of marriage. Marriage is indeed a profound call to holiness. Marriage is deeply blessed by God. We see that repeated, first of all, in the book of Genesis in our first reading, and then again by Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. And marriage is deeply blessed by God because it reflects the reality of God himself, the way that God is. Because God is a community of love, the bonds of love between the three persons of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And of course we know that married life is a community of love. It's a total giving of one to the other on every human level and every spiritual level. Our first reading from the book of Genesis takes us back to the beginning. And you know we have two accounts of creation in the book of Genesis. We have the one account that goes through the six days and God resting on the seventh. And of course, uh, man is the last thing that God created in that account. Today's account, man is the first thing that God created because he is the one who's going to name the animals. So we have uh, this special account. And the first words that we have in our reading today come from God saying, it is not good for the man to be alone. Why? Well, man and parenthetically woman, are created in the image and likeness of God. And God is not alone. There are three persons in one God, Father, Son, and Spirit. And they each experience a bond of love between them. So if we are made in God's image and likeness, it is not good for us to be alone either. 
And the other thing that comes to mind, and besides God not being alone, is the very nature itself, which John the Evangelist tells us over and over and over again, is that God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God and God in him. So our vocation, since we are in the image and likeness of God, is also to be love, to give love and to receive love, to be in relationship as our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so we can see that we are meant to love and be loved and to be in a loving relationship with others. This is true regardless of our vocation, but it is especially true in the special friendship relationship that is marriage. Adam needed someone to whom he could relate in love. You know, no bird or wild animal was going to suffice. He needed someone who could make him complete. And so it is that God creates woman. Notice that Adam does not witness God's creative process. He is cast into a deep sleep. But the very way in which God creates woman shows that she is of the first same nature and dignity that he is. That she is equal to man in the very basics of humanity. And in Eve, in Eve, when God brings Eve to Adam, he encounters another self. And we see this expressed in his joyous exclamation, at last, here is one that is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And thus men and woman come together in marriage, and in so doing, they mirror the reality that is God, God's very way of being. Because God is a community of persons, and those who are married form a community of persons, a community of love. Marriage then is brought about by God as part of God's plan for the human race. This is the message of the book of Genesis and also our passage from the Gospel of Mark. Now in the Gospel, the religious leaders ask Jesus about divorce. What does Jesus say? The first thing he does is repeat the beautiful truth about marriage that we heard proclaimed in our first reading. A man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is God's divine plan for the human family. But then Jesus, not only does he restate that teaching, but he adds a very strong teaching to it. He goes on to say, what God has joined together, no one must separate. Now we know there may arise circumstances in which the two should no longer live together. But because of man and woman's likeness to God and vocation to love in following God's plan for them, they cannot simply undo the relationship that they have entered into with God as a partner a relationship which is meant to point to the reality of God's own being as a communion of persons bound together in faithful love. My brothers and sisters, there is one universal call to holiness. There are different ways for us to follow that call with God's grace and the guidance of the Spirit. Today, we are given an opportunity to affirm one of these paths the great vocation of marriage as we affirm what God teaches us about this part of his divine plan for us. Marriage is a great call to holiness. Marriage is profoundly blessed by God. It is part of his divine plan. And it reflects the way that God is, a community of persons bound together by love. 
Now to those of you who have come here today to celebrate special anniversaries or to reaffirm the great gift of your marriage even if it is an off year so to speak, uh, remember these beautiful truths about your vocation because your vocation is based upon God who is love and who lives as a loving communion of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The God of love has been at your side and will continue to journey along with you. Today, we celebrate with you all the good, all the joy, all the happiness of your life and your life together that has brought forth, especially in your families. And we salute you for your constancy, your fidelity, your resiliency, and your courage when challenges have arisen over the years in the course of your life together. We honor all the married couples who are here today. You are a powerful witness to the Creator's wisdom in making us male and female and in giving us the vocation of marriage, such a beautiful call to holiness. May God bless you with growing love and mutual respect and good health, happiness, and peace in the days ahead. <laughs>